Hello everybody, Xeno76 here, and I'm here for part 4 of my animation tutorial series. And in this episode, we are going... Well, I am going to teach you how to make a scene selection button. Where, in your Flash animation, or whatever the heck you're making in Flash, you can make it so the user can click on a series of buttons to skip them to certain parts of the movie. And I have this quick demonstration here of this, the only animation I've ever completed, which has scene selections in them, where you can skip to... The beginning, the middle-ish part, and the end of the video. So you click it, and boom, they're they're doing what they're doing. And I'm going to teach you how to do that. Now, I'll find the easiest way is if you download this file I provided in the link in the description below, so you can follow me with what we're doing, and I can teach you guys basically while watching at the same time, so you guys don't have to watch the video, hope you get it, and see if it doesn't work. But with this. Hopefully you'll be able to follow right along and it hopefully click in your head naturally. But we'll open the file. Once you download it, open it. And once you open it, it might pop up with something that says, You don't have these, these fonts installed on your computer. Would you like to switch them to system default font? Now just hit yes, because this file has a font that I downloaded. That's a Sonic the Hedgehog font. You, probably got, you guys probably don't have it. But if you do, good. If not, this is where we pop up at. You'll start up on frame two. I don't know why, <laughs> but let's just click this thing and move over to frame one. Now, what do we see here? I'm going to zoom in. I recommend you do the same. It looks like Sonic and his friends are bored. It looks like they're doing nothing. They have nothing to do, but there's a sign, pun intended, of this glimpse into the future. It looks like they're having a beach party. And we're, it's our job to start that beach party. You know, ergo, use the scene selection button to skip them over to when they're having a beach party. And to do that, we are going to turn this into a button. And if you've watched my previous episodes, you guys should at least know how to make a button by now and how it functions. So I'm going to go through this part very, very quickly. So we're going to hit convert to symbol, make sure it's a button. I'll make it beach party button it's in the system double click on it i'm going to make it a little bit fancier by making it put up this text that says click me to start a beach party make sure it's a little more centered it'll pop up right above the sign and i'm going to make it glow just so it stands out from the background a little bit more we're going to make it white glow bit stronger on the pixel sense and high quality and we're gonna make it where we click when we click down on it it feels like an actual button so I'm gonna make it go down a couple pixels test it out real quick so when you hover over it click me to start a beach party and that's popping up and when you click it, it looks like it clicks down like a button that's good now we need to tell it to do something so if you noticed all the way over here on frame 80 this is where the beach party is it's all animated, scripted, and everything, ready to go. But we need the movie, we need this button to tell the movie to go to that frame and play it. So what we're going to do here is click on, make sure you click on the sign, hit F9, or you can go and do it the slow way, which I honestly do not remember. Window, actions, which the shortcut symbol is F9, to bring up this thing. Make sure you have this little wand button clicked because it helps you build the code faster. And click on the plus symbol over here, add a new item to the script, and go to global functions, timeline control, and go to. Don't hit any other ones. Go to. And this pop little thing pops up. You can make it say go to and play, go to and stop. Just go to play, just leave it on that because there's a there's a code script that already stops it, so it'll stop it anyway, but what we're gonna wanna make sure is that this thing says on release, go to in play, and it says one. So if we click on this frame thing here, we can make it go to any frame we want. In this instance, it's frame number 80. So when you click on it, this thing should say and pop up that this code is on this button. Now here comes the real test. When we test the thing, hitting control enter, if you guys forget, I'm just saying, you can check if it goes to frame 80 right here and we'll start the beach party when we click it. Ta-da! So now they're all happy. Knuckles is sitting there surfing around. They're listening to music, which we can't hear. 
and they're sitting there having a cool beach party. That's nice. And pretty much that's the whole tutorial right there. <laughs> but what I'm going to do is take it one step further, and we're going to be a little bit evil here, and I'm going to make it to where we want them to go being to board again. We, we want them to go back to frame one by making another button. Now, I'm pretty much saying this because in my my like actual video, my flash video, I have it where you can click a menu button that brings you back to the menu. Now, I'm going to use this boombox here as an example. So I'm going to unlock everything. Unlock foreground too, because that's what has this palm tree and it's in the way. And VCAM. Always lock VCAM unless you're moving it. <laughs> but we're going to click on this, convert to symbol, blah, 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 blah. Convert to symbol button. I'll say back board button. Alliteration at the boazoo. Double click on it. We're going to make it fancy. Say click me to make them board. Board again. We're going to do our usual spiel. I'm going to decenter it because if I center it, it's going to be off the screen. We're going to do the whole glow thing so it'll pop out a little bit. White, high quality. Make it so this thing actually feels like a button. Do a quick test. Click on here so it pops up. Click me. It, and that's obstructive, but that's okay. This is pretty much a tutorial thing. I mean, this isn't a thing professional, but I do like how Knuckles is flying there. And now we're going to make the code pop up again. Sometimes the one's already on there. Make sure you have it clicked on. Click on global functions, timeline control, go to, and it defaults to one, which is good for us because that's where we want to go. So now that's in the system. It's in the file. We'll test it out one more time. Click them. Make sure they're having a beach party. They're having fun. All right. Let's go turn the boom box off and send them right back to Green Hill Zone. Ta-da! Working once again. And that's basically it. All you have to do now is just have a flash file to where it has an introduction or a main menu so they can click and use the main menu to um, send them to the scene selections. So essentially, what you want to do here... I mean, that's... I'm... I'm you guys... What the heck am I saying? Sorry that I'm going through all this, but I'm just giving you a little bit of advice down here, unless you guys don't already know how to do it. But in my Sonic and Shadow Battle, which I will play here, I have the sound disabled so you don't hear the super loud music. But basically right here, this is where in the code it would stop. This thing plays automatically in the background, but the scene selection, you can make it where it says go to the certain frames, which would bring it to the scene selection button. And then from there you can make it play the scene. Now, one more quick thing I would like to add to say is most of the time, if you just leave the code that simplistic, you may have overlapping sound files, which can cause a lot of unwanted results. And the best way I could say this is in my flash file, which I stupidly closed, but I should open up again, is it'll play a sound, it'll keep playing sound files when you don't want it to, like background music from another scene or something like that. So to fix that, I'm going to um, open up my already completed uh, scene selections thing that I made a while ago. And we're going to go back to the code here. And you can even add something else. Like, um, if you go back to timeline control and the global functions, you can make it also stop all sounds. So and it'll add two lines of code where it says on release, go to and play to frame 80, and on the release, it'll stop all the sounds. So if I go even further and add a song, which I'll just throw the Sonic Mania trailer music. Or maybe not, because they had a problem reading a file, but that's okay. I got about Donkey Kong music. No. God, it flashes so picky sometimes. I guess we'll go to my actual music folder here. Uh, Raving Telltale Heights. That works. It's going to be super unfitting, but that's okay. And actually, we'll put it on this because that's that could be what the music was playing. You know, who knows? We'll go find it. 
Braving Telltale Heights. I'll put it in the scene selection thing here and make it so it's an event. So it'll play even on all the time, no matter what. So when we start this, we'll click it. And it might be super loud. I'm going to turn it down just in case. Or it's not playing. Probably because it doesn't want to. Hold on. Start. And blah. No, it's not playing it. Hold on a moment. <laughs> All right, I'm back. I've had some technical difficulties with the sound not working. So I'm just going to put it at the beginning of the scene because it seems to work there only for some reason. So I apologize for a lot of music in advance, but when we start the movie... Or this little you know clip thing it'll start playing the music and since we have the code that says stop all sounds when we click on this it stops the music now that might be essential for setting up your scene so any music you were playing beforehand doesn't play when you skip to that scene so it doesn't overlap music and other crap like that now, I apologize for the end of this video being very unprofessional like but that's kind of just how the way I made it go so I hope you learned a little bit, and maybe I'll start working on part 5, which will be an even more complicated uh, tutorial, where we will dive into learning how to set up a preloader. So until then, again, I hope you've enjoyed, and Xeno76 is out, and you should all have a good one. Have fun flash animating, and I am out of here.